insane so far. NFL free agency. Now I did my mock draft video last week and I made a I made a mistake. I recorded that video about four days before free agency opened, but I released it the day after free agency opened, so a bunch of moves and stuff had happened. Uh, team signed people, dudes got traded, whatever. And then team needs just totally changed. So I'll have to redo that mock draft. I'm probably going to do it in like two weeks or something. Uh, once the dust has settled a little bit more. But the big move that I was waiting to happen before I did this free agency video has now happened. So... I'm going to talk about things a little bit now. No, I didn't talk about every single off-season move. There's been so many. Um, but these are just the big ones that stood out to me, personally. Um, I have two pages here of moves that I wrote down that stood out to me. Uh, let me know if you guys think there's any important ones that I missed. But like I said, I think I got all the major ones here. So we're going to start off with some retirements and then trades and then go to free agency moves. So the first major retirement is Aaron Donald. Uh, as a fan of a team in the NFC West, I can't say that I don't feel a little bit relieved about the fact that we're not going to be dealing with this guy every single week now, or every single week, every single season now. Uh, real fast, when I did my game, my shutter speed got it adjusted. Hold on. Okay, that should be better. I, my, I was messing my camera earlier. My shutter speed must have gotten adjusted. Um, but yeah, not having to face Aaron Donald every season now. At least, you know, a couple times a season. That's going to be nice, but... Uh, retires with an amazing career. I think he likely will get into the Hall of Fame. I think I saw in his pro football reference, I think he said he had like an 81.9% chance to get into the Hall of Fame or something like that, but based on his name recognition as well, I definitely think he will. Uh, he played 154 games, recorded 111 sacks, 340 tackles. He forced 24 fumbles. He was a three-time winner of Defensive Player of the Year. He was a ten-time Pro Bowl Bowler. And he was an eight-time First Team All-Pro. Now another major retirement is Jason Kelsey. We saw this one coming. Um, it was kind of leaked a little bit, but then he walked it back. But we knew it was going to come. Uh, 193 games he played. He was a seven-time Pro Bowler and a six-time First Team All-Pro. I think uh, both Jason Kelsey and Aaron Donald will likely end up in the Hall of Fame if I had to guess. I don't know if they'll be first ballot or not, but I think they get in. Alright, now some trades, and this trade here was the trade that I was waiting for. Uh, I thought that this was likely to happen anyway. But for me, this totally cements the draft, uh, at least in the top spot. The Chicago Bears trade Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a 2025 sixth round pick. And that becomes a fourth round pick. If Justin Fields plays 51% of the snaps this season. That was a little bit of a spoiler alert for later in the video. But he will now be backing up Russell Wilson who signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Pittsburgh is a totally new. QB room now, and how do I feel about that? Well, I know Justin Fields had to get out of there in Chicago for a multitude of reasons. Not to get into 
all of them, but you know, assuming that they're they're drafting now Caleb Williams. If Justin Field or excuse me, if Caleb Williams goes out there and he struggles. Right, let's say he has a bad game or two. There would be fans like adamant give Fields a shot. Right? Because you kind of see it now. I don't, if you look at social media at all, there is a very loud contingent of Chicago Bears fans that are convinced that Justin Fields is still the guy they wanted to hold on to Fields. And apparently Fields is very well liked in that locker room. A lot of the guys in the locker room really like Fields. So I think those those factors combined, you had to get him out of there. And they'd been shopping him around for a little while. Um, they were trying to get more than this. It seemed like they were trying to get at least a second or third round pick, it felt like. But nobody was willing to bite on that. Some other teams ended up making other trades instead. Um, seemingly passing on fields. So ultimately he ends up in Pittsburgh, but honestly, I, I think it's a good spot for him being behind Russell Wilson, um, not being the starter, getting to sit behind a vet. I know Russell Wilson struggled uh, in Denver, but he still has a ton of experience. He's a Super Bowl winner. Um, he studied, studied under Pete Carroll, who's an underrated QB whisperer. Uh, I think it'll be good for Fields, and he kind of plays a somewhat similar style to a younger Russell Wilson, so I think getting some mentorship from him. I don't know if Fields is going to rehabilitate his career. I don't know if he will ever become a starter again in the NFL. But I think if you were going to send him anywhere to give him the best odds of rehabilitating his career, Going to the Steelers team with Russell Wilson is probably the best shot he has. Speaking of uh, Pittsburgh and teams moving on from Justin Fields, Kenny Pickett is traded to the Philadelphia Eagles for two 2025 seventh round picks and a 2024 third round pick. Uh, the rumors were that Philadelphia and Chicago were engaged in trade talks about Fields, but ultimately Philadelphia felt like the asking price was too high, so they moved on to Kenny Pickett. And now Pittsburgh has completely cleaned house on their QB room, as I mentioned, and Pickett gets to sit behind Hurts for a season or two. Um, maybe get some fourth quarter snaps and blowouts. Maybe, you know, the end, last two games of the season, last game of the season, if they're in a playoff position, then security gets some games. Uh, I'm not, if, you know, if I'm Kenny Pickett, I'm not mad about that situation. Uh, Keenan Allen. Now, originally it was reported that Keenan Allen was being cut. But then, like, a couple hours later, it's like, oh, actually, no, he's being traded. It's like, okay. Uh, Keenan Allen gets traded to the Chicago Bears for a 2024 fourth round pick. Keenan Allen's going to be 32 years old at the start of next season. Last year he had 13 games, got 108 receptions for 1,243 yards and 7 touchdowns. And I'm actually not mad about that move. There's a couple moves that Chicago makes in here that I think I think they're setting up uh, Caleb Williams for success. They're putting veterans around him. Um, now I you know I can't remember. It's been a few years now, but I want to say that when Justin Fields went into Chicago as their rookie quarterback. Most of his offensive weapons were also young guys, like rookie to year two guys. I don't, I don't quote me on that, but that's just that's. I, I think I remember that being the case. It was a very young offense, but Chicago is now bringing in veteran offensive guys to go with their 
assumingly their rookie QB they're bringing in, which I think is a smart move. You know, even if those guys aren't going to be there long term, even if you're likely like not pushing for the playoffs this season, bring in veteran guys that can show your young guy how to be a professional in the league. They run the right routes. They're not going to have egos. I think that's smart. Uh, now, speaking about my Seattle Seahawks, we acquire Sam Howell, a 2024 fourth round pick, and a 2024 sixth round pick, for 2024 third round pick, and 2024 fifth round pick. So we move down our third to a fourth and our fifth to a sixth. You know, we bring in Sam Howell, honestly. I'm not mad about it thinking back to the last season during my weekly NFL reviews. I feel like there was multiple times I talked about Sam Howell having good games. There's a couple times where I watched Commander's games and Sam Howell stood out to me as a positive. And he's still pretty young. He's younger than... I think all but like one or two of the top QBs in this draft class. So he's still pretty young. Uh, he went 21 touchdowns, 21 interceptions last season. He had that Jameis Winston stat line. I'm not expecting the world out of him. I'll obviously be backing up Geno Smith. Uh, we no longer have Drew Locke on the roster. But I mean, as a backup, Sam Howell, I'm not, I'm not upset about it, I think. You know, let's assume Gino leaves next season or the year after. Sam Howell comes in either he stays as backup, he plays for a season, there's a rookie QB, I don't know, but if Sam Howell wants to step in and play some games, I'm going to be interested to see what he can offer. Now, Cincinnati did something crazy. They made a trade. They never make trades. Uh, they traded Joe Mixon to the Houston Texans for a 2024 seventh round pick. Um, that felt a little bit low to me. Now I'm not super like informed on Cincinnati's situation. So somebody, a Bengals fan that's more familiar with the workings of their situation, if you want to let me know kind of the vibes around this move. I thought Joe Mixon had a, a, a good season. I know, I know he needed a contract extension, so maybe that's it. But looking at their depth chart, they have Zach Moss right now as their starting running back. And like, I'm not saying Zach Moss is bad, but is he good enough to be a starter? Is he going to replace Mixon's production? I don't really know. Uh, Mixon's only 28 years old next season. You assume he might have two, three more good seasons of production left in him. And then, yeah, Houston extended him three years at $27 million. Uh, last season, Joe Mixon played 17 games. He had 257 rush attempts for 1,034 yards and nine touchdowns. And looking at some of these other... Um, uh, QBs that got traded, I think he had like the second, or excuse me, QBs, running backs that got traded. He had like the second best stats of all of them, but he got a worse return. Um, so I don't know. Um, and these are just some moves I don't really have much of a commentary on, but Mac Jones gets moved to the Jacksonville Jaguars for a 2024 sixth round pick. Uh, he's fallen far short of expectations at this point. Probably going to be a backup for a year or two, and then maybe out of the league. I'm not sure. Um, but I think with Belichick leaving, just maybe clearing out some of the Belichick guys, and then uh, um, you know, clearing house, bring in, bring in fresh blood. And then, uh, hold on, let me check one thing real quick. He did leave, right? Bill Belichick, I thought he got fired. 
He left, right? Because this is saying he's still on the team. No, yeah, okay, but he just didn't go anywhere else. That's really weird. Yeah, because there was, like, rumors he was going to go to the Falcons, but it looks like he's not going to be coaching anybody. Yeah, okay. They just still had him listed as the, the GM of the team. So, I don't know. Uh, anyways, that was just really weird. Um, the, the next little move, Jerry Judy gets straight to the Cleveland Browns for a 2024 fifth round pick and a 2024 sixth round pick. Alright, that's all of our trades. Now let's get into the free agent signings. We'll start, we're going to go position by position. We're going to start here with the quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins. Now this is funny because in my mock draft video, I talked about how I assumed Cousins was going to re-sign with Minnesota. Honestly, I, I thought he was going to. I know there was a lot of rumors about him wanting to go somewhere else, but I thought that was him trying to get more money out of Minnesota or something, but I was like, you know, with the players they have, Justin Jefferson, like, they're not gonna have a young rookie QB or mediocre QB running the offense, right? Well, I was wrong about that. <laughs> um, Kirk Cousins to the Atlanta Falcons, four years, $180 million. Now I contend Kirk Cousins is one of the most underrated players in the league. He's not spectacular. He's not necessarily good at those hero plays. Like, he's not gonna lead a game-winning two-minute drive if you're down two. You know, he, he, he's not gonna throw the Hail Mary to win the game. Things like that, but he's gonna play. He's not gonna throw many interceptions. He's not gonna throw many 50-50 balls. He's just going to manage the game. He's going to run the offense to the book. You know, he's a safe quarterback, and he's very underrated. Four years, $180 million. Like I said, he played eight games last season before his Achilles injury. Had a completion rate of 69.5%. He threw for 2,331 yards, 18 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. At the start of next season, he will be 36, and Taylor Heineke will be backing him up. And I was looking at this Atlanta Falcons team a little bit, and they've kind of got a little bit of a squad. B. John Robinson at running back going into his second year. Their wide receiver core, they have Drake London, Darnell Mooney, Rondale Moore. Those aren't like huge names, but they're pretty decent. They're all right. You have Kyle Pitts at tight end. They finished third in the NFC South last season. I could see them being in the mix for the top two spot. I think Buccaneers are still probably the best team in that division. But the Saints right now, with all their weird cap stuff they've got going on, Saints finished second last year. I could see them falling down to third, potentially fourth. I don't know, but I, I think I, I could see Atlanta getting into a top two spot in that division. That's a little bit of a squad right there. Now, I've already alluded to this, but uh, Russell Wilson gets signed by the Pittsburgh Steelers, a one-year, $1.2 million deal. This feels a lot like a prove-it deal after all the, the issues in Denver being cut by them. But if you look at his stats, especially last season, I said this, there was a point last year where Russell Wilson was playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the league. But I felt like by the point he had turned it around, the relationship had already been irreparably damaged. Um, he, last year he had he played 15 games at a 66.4% completion rate. Threw for 3,070 yards, 26 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Like I already said, uh, Justin Fields will be backing him up. Then like in their roster, Najee Harris at running back, he's been up and down 
wide receivers, you have George Pickens, Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin, tight end, Pat Fairmouth. Um, Pittsburgh finished third in the AFC North, and honestly, I don't see them finishing higher than third. Even bringing in Russell Wilson, I don't see them being better than Cleveland. I definitely don't see them being better than Baltimore. So, um, now, Sam Darnold could sign to the Minnesota Vikings on a one-year $10 million deal. The G Qobus is in Minnesota. Last season he played 10 games. Uh, did he play 10 games? Okay, yeah, because he played for San Francisco, so they probably brought him in in blowouts at the end of games, right? So he played 10 games. He had a 60.9% completion rate, 297 yards, two touchdown, one interception. Apparently he's going to be starting over Nick Mullins. But if you look at the depth chart in Minnesota right now at QB, it's, it's Sam Darnold and Nick Mullins. So you're thinking maybe they draft a rookie QB. Uh, what, what pick do they have again? I seem to see. What, the, what pick do the Vikings have? They have seventh right now. They're predicted to draft J.J. McCarthy, which I could see. So, oh no, this is assuming the Titans and the number seven overall pick to the Vikings for number 11 and number 23. So this is assuming a trade. So they would have to trade to get J.J. McCarthy. So I think they might do something like that. They might trade to get a QB and then probably cut Nick Mullen, Sam Darnold. Maybe starts, maybe doesn't, depending on who the quarterback they get is in the draft. I don't know. But I, I really wonder what Minnesota's plan is, especially with Justin Jefferson. He's a UFA after this season, an uh, unrestricted free agent. And there was a lot of rumors this offseason. There was rumors that Justin Jefferson was going to get traded to um. I saw one rumor that was uh, thinking he was, might get traded to Kansas City. I saw another one. Um, what was that other team I saw him linked to? That's going to make me I'm gonna look that up. apparently so he's been rumored he's been connected with Minnesota with Cincinnati and with Kansas City but he's a, like he's not he's not restricted to free agent so they I think Minnesota has to either try to convince him of their vision and then try to get him to extend try to maybe like they, do they franchise tag him or do you trade him instead of letting him walk try to get something there but I don't know if he's going to want to stick around because with Kirk Cousins leaving and that team's kind of in a weird spot right now it's going to be interesting to see what they do uh, now we're going to our running back Saquon Barkley to Philadelphia uh, the Eagles give him a 3 year 37.75 million dollar deal um Last season, he played 14 games. He had 247 rushes, 962 yards, and six touchdowns. Uh, now it's going to be him and Kenneth Gainwell. I think, I'm pretty sure Barkley would likely, you know, start over Gainwell. He's going to get the majority of the snaps, I assume. But that's not a bad one-two punch. Him and Gainwell, I don't, I don't mind Gainwell. He's pretty good. Um, you know, with Philadelphia just falling short last season, um, they definitely feel like they can do better this season, I'm sure. They feel like they need to push to try to get back to the Super Bowl. Uh, Cam Jerkins is stepping in with Jason Kelsey going out. So it'll be interesting to see how that offense looks, because Jason Kelsey was a very important part of that offense, obviously. But 
supposedly he's like handpicked this game jerk and sky and like personally trained him though you know I, i'm confident he can step in but saquon barkley to philadelphia it's an interesting move um deandre swift to the chicago bears three years 24 million Last year he played 16 games, 229 rushes for 1,049 yards and 5 touchdowns. Again, a veteran offensive weapon to come in with your rookie quarterback. I think Chicago, right now I think Chicago is, is making the smarter moves that they can. Um, now this is the scary one for me. Um, Derek Henry to the Baltimore Ravens. Two years and sixteen million dollars total. That feels like kind of a steal. I know Derrick Henry's a little bit older, but Derrick Henry went for cheaper than Tony Pollard, DeAndre Swift. Well, I guess actually not. Uh, what? That's eight million a year. Twenty-four divided by three. Okay, so it's the same as DeAndre Swift. Less than Saquon. Yes, it is less than Pollard. But it's so it's eight a year. My mistake. My mistake. Just only seeing sixteen million. Kind of like well. Uh, we had Derrick Henry to the Baltimore Ravens last year. He played seventeen games. He had two hundred and eighty rushes for one thousand one hundred sixty-seven yards and twelve touchdowns. That was in a Tennessee team that was kind of middle of the road to below average. And what I'm thinking, I'm thinking that run option. That's what a lot of people been talking about. But you have that ball, you get that ball under center with Lamar and Derrick Henry. They read that offense right there pre-snap and they make the decision like, okay, and if you're the defense, you're like, okay, I either have to deal with Lamar taking this and running or handing it off to Derrick Henry who's going to take it and run the other direction or Lamar going back to pass. Because at this point, Lamar, Lamar Jackson's passing ability has become underrated because of how good his running game is. He's actually a pretty good passer as well. That is a terrifying. I'm not sure if the Seahawks play Baltimore this year. Let me look at our schedule. Let's see. said that run option with Henry and and uh, um, Lamar I think that the Ravens could have one of the best offenses in the league next season especially in rushing yards like that's gonna be hard to deal with um, now our final running back signing we have to the Tennessee Titans to fill in Derrick Henry's shoes a little bit. He leaves Dallas. Three years, $21 million deal. Last year he played 17 games, 252 rushes, 1,005 yards, and six touchdowns. Titans kind of also in a weird spot, but they're kind of doing what Chicago did a little bit. Um, Tennessee with Will Levis, they now have another veteran presence on offense for Will Levis, Tony Pollard. Um, Ridley, Diop, you know, there's some good moves here. And another little bit of a spoiler here as we move to wide receivers. Calvin Ridley signs in Tennessee. Ridley has a four-year, $92 million deal last season. He played 17 games. Had 76 receptions for 1,016 yards and 8 touchdowns. He immediately slots in at their WR1 spot. And like I said, just that veteran support around Will Levis coming into his sophomore season. I um, try to avoid that sophomore slump a little bit, right? Um, now Gabe Davis to Jacksonville. He leaves Buffalo. I should have looked at who Buffalo's depth chart. I don't know. We don't even know what they got right now. Um, three years, 
is $39 million. Uh, last season, Gabe Davis, he played 17 games. He had 45 receptions for 746 yards. He had seven touchdowns. He's only 25 years old next season. I think looking at that Jacksonville team, I think he's your WR2. They have Christian Kirk and Zay Jones as well. But the end of the season, I'm not sure how that'll pan out, but I think coming into the season, he should be a WR2. Looking at that Jacksonville squad, you have Trevor Lawrence, of course, Travis Etienne, Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram. Uh, last season, the Jaguars finished second in the AFC South. I don't see them falling any lower than that. I think there's, I think the Titans could potentially slide a bit next season. The Colts, I don't know what they're going to do next season. Because um, they, they lost Gardner Minshew, who they relied on heavily last season. And then, so it's going to basically be all Anthony Richardson next year. And we knew how that went last year at this injury. So if he has a repeat of that, I could see the Titans finishing in a worse spot than they did last year. And Jacksonville could could really be, I could see them being improved over last season, and they are pretty good last season. Now I move to the offensive linemen. Um, some of these guys got some real good deals as teams, as teams understand how important this position is, and especially, in my opinion, these two moves are the two smartest moves of the offseason. I'm just going to say them both at the same time, but Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis to the Carolina Panthers. Robert Hunt on a five-year, $100 million deal, and Damian Lewis on a four-year, $53 million deal. So you have two offensive linemen right there for a total of $153 million, but it's the second, third most important position in the NFL in the modern era, in my opinion. Without a good offensive line, you're doing nothing. And they got two really good ones there to protect Bryce Young, because you know, he had a lot of issues last season. He was getting pressured early and often. He had barely any time in the pocket to get the ball out before the pocket collapsed. And that really was a detriment to his rookie season. You know, and for those, for those rookie quarterbacks, their processing time isn't up to NFL speed yet. Their decision making isn't up to NFL speed yet. So having these guys to offer better protection is going to really help Bryce Young coming into year two. Um, Robert Hunt, last season, he played 11 games. He had the lowest pressure rate among all offensive linemen, only 0.8%. All season, well not all season, but through all 11 games, he only allowed one single sack and three pressures in 315 snaps. Do you realize how insane that is? The dude had 315 snaps, the QB only got pressured three times on his side and sacked once. Now Damian Lewis, he's in Seattle. Uh, so I've seen him. He's pretty good. He's decent. Uh, he was he was rated 41st amongst all guards in pass block win rate. So for Bryce Young, those guys will give him the best chance to succeed and improve this coming season. Uh, Christian Wilkins. Now we're moving to defense here. Uh, and the rest of these guys are all defense. Yeah. Christian Wilkins, he goes to the Las Vegas Raiders, a four-year, $110 million deal. This is huge. Las Vegas is going all in on defense, it feels like. Because uh, they said that thing with Jimmy Garoppolo, he got like busted for steroids, I think. I don't think he's going to be. So they're going to be playing Aiden O'Connell again to start. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but Christian Wilkins is a beast. He played 17 games last season. He got 9 sacks, 38 solo tackles, and 1 forced fumble. Now here's the thing. Him and Max Crosby both play on the left. And like I know, the 
there's like this idea that maybe you split them up so you got pressure on both sides but like what if they didn't what if you played both those dudes on the left and you just have Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins coming at you on the same side if you're a lineman or QB like I don't know in my opinion that's what I would do just have that one side be so scary like you have to double over there or whatever and then that leaves even more opportunity for the right side because you're so focused on the left right I don't know it's just that's maybe that's what I would do I don't know if that's what they'll do I think they'll likely split them up um, Leonard Williams he extends the Seattle Seahawks three years 64 and a half million dollars he played 18 games last season got five and a half sacks 37 tackles in the 10 games he played with Seattle, he got four sacks. So, the majority of those sacks came with the Seattle defensive system. Uh, now the new head coach, new coaching all over, up and down. Um, Seattle obviously sees something in him that they want to keep around, whereas they're cleaning house in some of the other position groups. Uh, Brian Burns, he extends the New York Giants five years, $141 million. Last season he played 16 games, he got eight sacks, 32 tackles, one forced fumble. Um, he was only, he's only 26 at the start of this coming season. Now for me, I still think there's question marks up and down that offense in New York. I have question marks on the O-line. I have question marks at wide receiver. I have question marks at quarterback. But the defense looks pretty squared away, so it'll be interesting to see what New York does. Um, our second to last signing I want to talk about here, Patrick Queen. He goes to Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh making a, a pretty good handful of moves. He signs a three-year, $41 million deal. He played 17 games last season. Recorded three and a half sacks, 84 tackles. He will only be 24. Uh, like I just said, Pittsburgh's a very interesting team next season. They went 10 and 7 and finished third. Do you think they do better than that? Do they go maybe 12 and 5 next season? I could maybe see that. But I could also. I could also see them regressing a little bit, potentially. Now, finally, the last move. Xavier McKinney to the Green Bay Packers. Last season, he had 17 games. He got three interceptions. He's a safety. He's only going to be 25 years old. So, those are all the biggest moves, in my opinion. If you feel like I missed out on anything, let me know. Uh, I was just looking up and down the transactions list, and I was like, eh, yes, yes, no, no. But let me know what you think of this NFL offseason so far. I feel like it's been pretty crazy, personally. It feels pretty action-packed so far. I imagine it's going to be cooling off here, though, now that the big bulk of the big moves are done. Um, who are the best remaining free agents? See what we have left. Um, do 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 do. Yeah, a lot of these guys extended. Tyron Smith hasn't signed anywhere. Chase Young has not signed anywhere. That's interesting. I feel like Chase Young will likely resign in San Francisco. Um, he's only 24 years old. That's his best shot to win a ring, I think. It depends how much money he's going to want, to be honest. But Bosa said he really wanted to keep Chase Young around. He liked playing with him. Uh, but they signed Leonard Floyd. The 49ers signed Leonard that stop them from re-signing Chase Young? Maybe it'll be interesting. Seattle get on the phone get Chase Young. Uh, Stephen Gilmore doesn't have a team. Jadavion Clowney doesn't have a team. Kev-
Evan Seidler doesn't have a team. Justin Blackmon. Odell Beckham Jr. I think he likely won't have a team. We'll see. I could see the Ravens extending him. Tyler Boyd. Yeah, some of these guys, they'll, I think they'll, they'll fizzle out later into teams, maybe, if someone gets hurt or something. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.